Welcome back to mom's dining room slash sewing studio. I'm really enjoying taking these um, entry level machines and kind of showing you how to get started on them. So I have another one now and it's been a minute or two since I've made one of these videos so this one might be a little rough but just hang with me. I'll try to get you enough information to, to get you running some fabric under here. This one is the Singer Heavy Duty. It, the model number is 4452. And I picked this one up at Hobby Lobby. They usually run around. I've seen them on the internet for 160 plus shipping or around 200 if you go pick one up. I think they have them at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, um, just about anywhere. And I am really impressed with this little machine. <laughs> Um, it is a good solid machine and it has a few features to it that I really like. So um, we'll go over those and then I'll show you how to get some thread in there and kind of how to get started. Okay, so let's get started. So this machine, the manual, is online. doesn't come with it. But um, so I printed off the page of these are the accessories that come with it. So let's run through these real quick. The first is the all-purpose foot, and that's going to be the one that's already on the machine. Okay. It's letter A, but you can see it right there. It's just a metal, a metal foot, and I will show you how to take those off and change them in a little while. The second foot is a zipper foot, and it looks like this. And the reason it's good for a zipper is because you can be sewing alongside of the zipper. It doesn't have the slot in the center. It lets you get right up next to the teeth on that zipper. This is your buttonhole foot. That's kind of advanced. I really don't make buttonholes by machine too much anymore, but we might have to practice with this one. Next is the button foot and that is this one um, it has a little lip to it you can actually it will hold the button in place on your fabric while you sew the button on once again that's another place where I don't sew a lot of buttons and usually doing it by hand works good but that you know it's kind of a neat thing if you want to make a lot of shirts or something with buttons on it the next one is your nonstick foot, and it's white. The bottom of it is just really slick. So if you're sewing any kind of fabric that you're getting some drag with, you can switch to this foot, and that'll make it slide through there a lot more easily. This is the thing that really impressed one of the things that really impressed me. This comes with a walking foot. And this is what it looks like. And what this does is it grabs your fabric from the top and it pulls it through at the same time on your machine. And this is getting a little bit in depth here. On this machine, there are these feed dogs right under there. That's what pulls the fabric through the machine as you sew. It's continually pulling it. Well, if you're sewing a lot of different layers, sometimes the bottom gets pulled through a lot faster than the top and it's uneven. But you put this on there and it's going to pull the top as well, these little grippers. I don't know if you can see the teeth on there. But they grip the fabric and they pull the top through at the same pace as the bottom. So that's pretty awesome. Um, there is. This little thing is in there also, and it goes along with this. This is a little bit different from the one that I'm used to using. I think you're going to put this through the top thing. But you can set this at a distance, like if you want an inch between the edge of your fabric and where you're sewing. And this is like a, a seam guide, mainly for quilting. Um, let's see what else. We have a clearance plate. You use this when you, if you're sewing like some jeans and you're coming up on a really thick seam, you can put this underneath here 
and it kind of bridges the gap there and lets you sew smoothly over a seam. We'll look at how that's used later. I've actually never had one of those included in a machine. So that's a nice little extra. You have two different kinds of two different packages of needles here. Now, needles have a size. You can see there, this is the 116. The reason there's two numbers is one is a European size, that's what they use in Europe, and the other number, the 16, is the American size. So, you have some 16s, and you have some 14s. Um, and you're probably thinking, well, which one do I want? You can find a needle chart on the internet pretty simply. Just to learn, you know, these, these needles are going to be fine just to practice with. In fact, it came with a needle already in it, so we're just going to practice with that. But here's the different kind of things you're looking at. What type of fabric are you using? You know, a, a lightweight, a medium weight, or a heavy weight like denim or leather or something like that. Now there's two different kinds of points, a regular and a ballpoint. Your regular one is very sharp so that it pierces through it, you know, really well. The ballpoint is a rounded point and it keeps from snagging or tearing any of the threads. And I like this chart because it, you know, kind of gives you some examples of the different types of fabric that would work well. And then your needle size. Now, if you notice, as the numbers get larger, the fabric gets thicker. So the larger the needle, the larger the the shank, the shaft of the needle is going to be. The, the stronger it is. So, um, so that's something to look at. And like I said, these are the kind of things you will refine as you keep on sewing. But for right now, we're just going to use the needle that's in it. And that's going to be fine to practice. Now, let's see. What else do we have? A seam ripper and a brush. The brush is for cleaning out, like under the bobbin where lint gets and stuff like that. Now, your seam ripper is right here. This is extremely sharp. It is very easy to pierce yourself with this. So, please be very careful with this. Don't ever put it in your mouth. Um, I've, seen, I've seen people do some really weird things with these. Please be careful with this. Don't ever leave it laying around without having it, you know, snugly in here. Don't let any kid, you know, small kids get the brush because they'll pull this out and you can do some damage with it. I'm not kidding. It's very sharp. It's very sharp in here. So, quite a little dangerous tool there. Um, you have two different spool holders, a very small one and a large one, and we'll look at those when to use those two things. Um, you have some bobbins. Now, every machine uses a different size bobbin. I think these are 15s. Well, I'm sure we'll run across that, but I mean, you have Four, I think, came with it. So you have plenty. Um, <laughs> let's see. Your L screwdriver. This is a handy dandy screwdriver. There are all different things in your machine. This is a screwdriver. This can be a screwdriver. You can use this to unscrew things. So it's really, really handy. You don't lose this. Um, the auxiliary spool pin and the felt cover are right here. And we'll look at where that goes in just a sec. And then it has a nice little cover that goes with it so you can put it over your machine. Those are really nice because if you're going to go a few days without sewing, you don't want dust to get all on your machine. All right, now let's just have a look at the parts of the machine. Let's see. I had also printed out a handy little diagram to keep me uh, on task because I tend to wander. First is your thread tension dial, which is right here. And if you'll see, you can spin this. And then between the three and the five, there are the little lines. That's because that's usually the tension that you're going to want to stay at. 
Now, as you get into some more advanced projects, there may be times when you want really tight tension. The, the higher the number, the tighter the tension. And this is the tension on the top thread. This is how tight it is when it gets fed to the needle. So for right now, we're just going to leave it at four. Um, this little knob right here, and let me bring this down. So let me go look at it. This right here, that is your presser foot tension. Now, this is your presser foot. So the tension on it means when you let that down, how hard is it pushing? That's preset from the factory, and I've never had to adjust one. But if you do, you know, say if someone at the factory tells you to adjust it, you're just going to take your handy little screwdriver there and twist it whichever direction. Um, to the left is going to be tighter and to the right is going to be, no, to the right is going to be tighter, to the left will be looser. So, like I said, that's not really necessary just to get us going. Okay, a thread take-up lever. It's inside here. You can't really see it. I mean, you, you probably can on your machine. You're not going to be able to you can see it moving there. There it comes. That pulls up the thread. Okay, so that's your thread take-up lever right there. Your reverse sewing lever is right here. When you need to go backwards, you hold this down while you're sewing, and then you let it back up, and it goes back the uh, frontwards direction. A thread cutter is right here. And all you have to do to use that is when you get through sewing, you're going to pull it out, and it cuts your thread just like that. Let's see what else we have here on our handy little sheet. Uh, the presser foot, we looked at that just a second ago. There's a lever back here behind it, and you raise it up and let it down. Um, a needle plate cover, that's right here. You can also, and you will have to take this off sometimes. Um, ever so often you can take this off and use your little brush and clean out from under there because it gets lint from the fabric and from the thread. Lint gets back up in here and it can make you get these little nests of thread when you're sewing. So what you'll do is you just take your little, it's going to use this end, you just unscrew it and pop it up and then you clean it out and put it back down. It's not going to be a big deal. Um... There's a removable extension table here. This was a really nice feature that I liked about this machine as well. Um, first of all, the little table, it has a storage thing under there so you can put all your accessories in that. And now when you take it off, it makes a free arm. So if you're trying to sew a tube this gets you where you can just wrap it right around here like a sleeve or something like that. And you can really get close to it that way. And then if you're sewing something flat, you put your bed back on, snap it in. You have a nice flat surface to sew on. Um, three needle position dial. This was pretty handy. It is number nine. Now that's right here. Let me see if I can get you a little bit better view. All right. So it's in the center. If you turn it to the left, you'll see this slides the needle over that way. And then this is going to be your far right position. And yeah, you will use this pretty regularly. That's a pretty handy thing, as you will see. Just to be able to move your needle over an eighth of an inch is you know, going to be handy for certain things. Uh, the bobbin stopper is right here. This doesn't move. Oops. It is going to help your bobbin. Sorry about all that bouncing. This right here, it doesn't move, but it will stop your bobbin from winding when it gets full. Um, the stitch width dial. is right here. 
Now this is how wide the stitch is when you're using a zigzag. And you see the little picture there. That's when you're going to use it is when you're uh, doing a zigzag. So if you want a really wide zigzag that goes like this, you're going to use a high number. If you just need a little tiny one width-wise, like up to down, peak to peak. Right. Now, your stitch length is right here. Okay. And this marking right here is a buttonhole. So when you're doing a buttonhole, as we'll see later, you're going to have it right here. For the most part, though, I leave mine on about three. Okay. Um, that's going to give you a straight stitch. Now, if you're doing the zigzag, what this is going to do, the stitch length will tell you how close are your peaks. This one tells you how far from peak to peak, up and down. This one is going to be like if you're doing a buttonhole, you're going to want your stitch length set really close together. That's why it's in here because you want those stitches to be right next to each other. But if you're doing a decorative stitch or something, you might want to be able to see the triangles, the up and down, okay? Um, now, the pattern selector dial is down here. And if you will notice, some are in black, or your buttonhole, then you have a red, a blue, and a black. This one dial can give you three different things. So if you're on the zero to four, you're gonna get all the black stitches. Now, if I move this around to the blue S1, then I get the choices of all the blue ones. So you're looking at the center pattern. That's what it's gonna sew. If I move it to the S2, it's going to sew any of these red designs. So that's how they give you three times as many stitches with only this many dials. Okay, so let's go back to three. I'm going to turn it back here so I'm set for a straight stitch at three. Okay. Um, the automatic threader, it doesn't thread the whole thing automatically. But this is a little, this doesn't come on a lot of the beginner machines and I really like that but you know I'm a little older and my eyes are not as clear and when we thread the machine I'll show you more but it comes through there it's got a little hook and it puts the hook through the eye that needle and pulls the thread right through the eye so you don't have to sit there and keep stabbing at it then we have the one step buttonhole lever which is right down under here. You pull this down, and that's what makes your machine start making buttonholes. So, if you notice it's doing funny things, this should be up anytime you're doing regular sewing. So, if you see that thing hanging down and you're just trying to sew a seam, push it back up because you're not you're not doing a buttonhole right now. Okay, so that's the accessories and that's the parts. So let me reposition the camera here and we will figure out how to wind a bobbin first, okay? Alrighty then. A sewing machine sews with two different threads. There's gonna be one from the top and one from the bottom called the bobbin. So let's wind a bobbin first of all. One thing I would like to call your attention to while we have it in this position is this horizontal spool pin right here. Most of your lower end sewing machines have a vertical spool pin. And this one comes with an extra. This would be inserted right here. This one's vertical, this one's horizontal. Now horizontal spool pins are for what we call cross wound threads. And that's threads that are wound like this one I don't know if you can see that, but it's like crosswise. This is a stacked thread, and it's just, it's wound just side by side all the way down. You use a stacked thread for this spool, okay? And you can also use this, the reason they included it is also because if you want to do some twin needle sewing, which we'll look at later, um, you're going to need two different threads. But anyway, we're not going to use this right now. 
The reason I like this is most of your higher end threads are cross wound and I was never able to use the cross wound threads on a lower end machine because it had the vertical spool pin. And I mean, this thread is not bad. It's just Coates and Clark from Walmart. It's fine. It is a little bit linty. And by that I mean you have to clean your machine out a lot more because it sheds that lint into the machine. So these are your better threads. So I was really excited to see this, this kind of spool pin. Anyway, we're going to put this on. Now, if you don't have something down here to stop it, this is just going to pull right off here. That's where these two little things come in handy. Now, this one, you want to use one as close to the size of your thing as possible. So, we're not going to use this big one because that's overkill. We're going to take oops, the smaller one and just insert it just like that and that will hold their, that on. Now, you're going to use two different threading diagrams with this. You're going to have one when you're sewing and one when you're winding a bobbin. So, this is what you do with the bobbin. First, you're going to come over here under number one and pull it till you feel it pop into the guide there. Okay? We're going to come under here. Alright. Now, we're going to go around this little metal thing and if you look right here you can see your diagram it's showing you come to this side first and what I do is I hold this thread down right here I'm holding it down with my finger and then whoops, come around and pull that pretty tight because you want it to go you see this little round thing that pops up you want it to go in between this thing and this round bottom plate, but don't go under that. Go in between these. Okay? Alright, then we're going to pull over here so that we can reach the bobbin pin. Now, your clear bobbin, it has a little hole right here. So you're going to want to take your thread and go in between there and then come right up right out the top top hole and then oops we're going to come over here and just snap it down on there and then pop that in place when you pop this in place like this, what it does is it disengages the needle. So your needle is not going to be going up and down while you're winding a bobbin. Alright, now I'm trying to do this standing up with a camera between me and the machine. So I'm going to put my presser foot up here on the table. And, okay, the next thing you need to do is turn the machine on. There's a button. over here on the side right there you just pop it on and you will see the light comes on and that brings up a point don't ever fool with your machine with it turned on because these machines don't have a sensor they don't know when your finger is under the needle if you press the presser foot accidentally or intentionally or your dog steps on it or whatever and your finger is under the needle it will sew your finger and that's just the way it is. So don't be scared of it, but do be careful. All right, so let's start winding the bobbin. And see, this, this machine, it is not playing. It's doing like 900 miles an hour. All right, I usually stop about right here and snip the thread that's sticking out it's going to hold on now and then continue to wind and you see it's filling up the bobbin and I'll tell you this wine this machine winds one of the prettier bobbins that I've ever seen even on a higher end machine it's all level a lot of the cheaper machines it'll like stack up on the bottom and then you do and you know you can still sew like that but it, it gives you an uneven tension so now watch what's going to happen as the thread fills up, it's going to start pushing the, the 
this post away from the holder. You see it gets to where it just won't, it won't spin anymore. That's how you know your bobbin's full. So press it, uh, push it away, and snip this, okay? And then we're ready to load the bobbin. So let me see if I can get a better position for that. Okay, we might have a pretty good angle on this uh, bobbin casing here, so let's see. The first thing you need to do is remove this clear cover and see it has a little threading diagram on there for you. So what you wanna do is slide that over, it pops up, and then you remove that, okay? Now, you wanna drop your bobbin in here so that your thread is coming off of the left side, okay? The thread is coming around and over right here. So you're going to drop that in. Now, there are two little notches in here. If I had a pointer, that would be awesome. Something to me. See, I don't have a film crew. It's just me. So I'm having to hold the camera and the machine and fish for something. Now, <clears throat> this little notch right here, this little groove, that's where you want to go in first. And sometimes it's a little bit tricky, but if you just keep trying, you can. Okay, so pull it to the right and then go back towards the left and make sure that thread gets caught in there, okay? And you're just going to pull it off to the side, okay? And pull it to the back. Now, do you see? That's how it looks, okay? So, I've got to go that direction. It'll be all right. So, put this back. Okay, so just snap that in there. Now the next thing is to load the thread, the upper thread. So once again, let me reposition the machine and the camera and I'll get back with you. Okay, so now we're ready to start having a little bit of fun. Let's load up the top thread. Now this is how it was left from when we got finished winding the bobbin. So what I want you to do is take this off of this spool. If you want to pull it all out and start over, that's, that's a good choice. Um, that way you'll see exactly, you know, how to do the whole thing. But what we're going to do is we have our thread on here. We have our spool holder. And it tells you one, two, three, just how to do this. So just follow along. The first thing we're going to do is go under this number one and make sure it pops down in here really well. Sometimes you can hold your finger on this. We're still going to go under the number two again. All right. Now, here's the number three. Let me get a, let me adjust this just a little. Okay. Now, there's your number three. So, and be sure at this point, when you start loading your thread, your presser foot should be up in the up position, right? It should not be down. And that's because there's a tension dial in here and when the presser foot is down, that tension dial is squeezed shut. So sometimes the thread won't get in there well. In order to load it right, put your presser foot up for the whole first part of the threading. Now there is a point where we're gonna put it down, but to get a good tension, it's important that you have this foot in the up position. Okay, so now we are through the number two guide. We're going to lay it down into this channel marked number three. Now down here at the bottom, you can see there's a little U-turn sign with a four. So we're gonna come up to the four. 
and then up here on the top, you see we're going to wrap around for number five. So now we've come around. And we're going back down this next channel where it says number six. Okay. Now I'm going to hold off right there and let me get a better angle. I'm going to prop the machine up. Maybe it won't fall over. Okay. Now the next part is a little bit fiddly. It's not too bad. Alright. You see where we've come through the channel that's marked six. Alright, this plate right here, you're going to push that thread back on the top and then let it fall into a little notch back in the back and then pull it right back to the front. Okay? Now your next guide is way back here. It's like on top of the needle. Okay? It's just a very little slit on the right hand side and sometimes it is kind of hard to get it back in there but it can be done. Sometimes what I do is pull it pull the thread to the left, slip it in there, and then come down and around like that. Okay? Now we're ready to thread the needle. At this point, it's usually easier if you let the presser foot down. Okay? That will give you some tension on it, but you want the presser foot up while you're threading it at least through channel three. But after that point, you can let your presser foot down. Now, all we need to do is get the thread through the eye of the needle. Now, you can poke it through there if you want to. But once you get used to using these needle threaders, you're going to love this. Um, pull this bar down, and then you'll see it comes. What's going to happen is a little hook goes right through the needle. Come over to this hook here. Slip it under there. And it does take a little bit of practice. When I first started using it, I hated it. But now that I've gotten faster at it, we're going to pull that off. We're going to snip it off. And now we have a normal size thread. And we have our bobbin. Okay? So to get ready to sew, what we need to do now is pull up the bobbin thread. Take the top thread in between your thumb and forefinger and hold it out to the side with a little bit of pressure to it. You want it, you want it taut. Now take the hand wheel over here on the left. This little wheel is called your hand wheel and you can turn it back backwards and forward to make the needle go in. I usually turn it towards myself because that is the way that it's designed to uh, to operate. So turn it towards you and what we're going to do here, we're going to hold this out to the left. We're going to turn the wheel and sink the needle down. Now, a little speed. Now see? It pulled the bobbin thread right up there. So now we have two threads coming out of the machine. One through the needle right here and then one from the bobbin right there. And you can see the bobbin turning as we go. Okay? Now I think you're ready to sew something. I know you're anxious. So here's a piece of fabric. Turn the machine on now. And what you're going to do, there's little lines here in your feed dogs, feed dog plate. Um, this is for your seam allowance. Like your pattern will say a half inch seam allowance or a quarter inch seam allowance, whichever. Um, you line the edge of the fabric up with whichever seam allowance you want, and that's the distance from the needle. 
This is one of the handiest little tools that I have for sewing, believe it or not. It's one of those little dollar tools from Walmart or Dollar Tree or whatever, but it's a really soft spatula thing. Because there's so many times when it's tempting to put your finger right under here when you're trying to hold some fabric down or do something close. And that's a good way to get your finger sewn. So this is what I use. It keeps me from sticking my finger under there. Um, you're going to put your fabric under there, a little bit past the needle. Let the feed dog down. Now when you get ready to get started, hold your thread out to the side, okay, or to the back. Some people go to the back. Not tight, you're not yanking on it. You just don't want the thread to get sucked back under there. So for the first few stitches, you can just hold that, and then you can drop it, and then you free it. Got it right on through there. And when you get ready to stop, you raise the feed dog, you pull your fabric out from under here, and this is where that handy dandy thread cutter on the side, you snip your threads, and you have it sewn. Now, I am not a machine mechanic, I'm not a singer rep, I'm not, I'm just someone who has sewn for a long time. If you have problems right off the bat, take all the thread out of the machine and re-thread it because that's usually if you didn't raise your feed dot your uh, presser foot when you were going through channel three a lot of times it didn't get into those discs appropriately another thing is if your stitches on the top look bad it's usually a problem with your bobbin if your stitches on the bottom look bad it's usually a problem with your top thread so re-thread that if it's like crinkling your fabric like this, then this might be too tight. So you can loosen it up a little. You can tighten it up a little. Yeah, you know, sewing is something you have to evolve into. You have to practice with it. Um, but it is a lot of fun. I really love all these different. Uh, I'll show you one. All these different seams, stitches that come with this machine some decorative ones. They're really kind of fun to play with. Uh, let me just show you. One. And then I will get some width to it. Uh -huh. Oops, didn't cut that one. But, uh, See how fun that is? You could use that to decorate a little collar or pocket or whatever. So, all in all, like I said, this little singer is pretty amazing. I think if I had to pick one thing that I love the most about it, it would be this horizontal thread spool because I'm a thread snob, as they call it, and I do like nice thread. And in order to use the nicer threads, you have to have this horizontal thread spool. Um, I love all these different stitches. I mainly make quilts. So the presence of this foot was a seller for me. If you're going to make a quilt, and I have a video on uh, somewhere in my channel about how to make a little layered quilt. You can do that very easily with this machine. It's really solid. It's fast. It is a tiny bit on the loud side, but that's because it's all metal on the inside. So it's a workhorse. I mean, you could sew denim, leather, um, anything you wanted to. So it is a little bit higher than the other two machines that I did the tutorials on, but I think it's well worth it. I don't think you would regret this at all. So. If you enjoyed this, drop me a like, a comment, um, subscribe to my channel. That would be awesome. And I hopefully I'm going to come back and do some videos on how to use the walking foot and how to use this. Oh, before I go, please let me show you how to take the foot off and replace the foot and the needle. 
you're supposed to change a needle every six to eight hours and I'll just be honest I probably don't do that I don't time mine I usually change it after every project um, but I make mainly quilts so that's a lot of sewing but um, you know if, and sometimes you get bad needles so don't be afraid to swap out a needle and see if maybe that's the problem all right what you want to do to change your needle is you're going to twist this little fat, flat disc here towards you. Now, one thing that I always do when I am changing my needle is I always put a little sticky note <laughs> under here and that's to keep the needle from falling down into the uh, the guts of the machine because there's a hole there's holes there and it will fall in there and it takes forever to get it back out and you must get it out because it can cause a problem so hold on to the needle and twist this towards you and the needle will just come right out okay now let me okay so here's your needle. Now when you get ready to put your new needle in, if you can see here, um, this needle has a flat side and a round side. It's only going to fit up in here one way with the flat side to the back, okay? So flat side goes to the back, and that's the only way it's going to go all the way up in there. So when you get it up in there, then you just twist this away from you, and you have a new needle, okay? Okay, now for the foot, these are just snap-on feet. Back behind here, let's see if I can turn it around now. You see this little thing, this little lever, when you pull it down, it's going to release your foot. Okay, pull it up. I'm sorry. When you push it up, it's going to release your foot. Okay, so to replace the foot, you put it where the bar is going to fit right under that little notch right there. And then you lower, lower the foot and it pops in. And then when you pick it up, your foot's on there. Okay, and that's all you have to do. So it's time for you to have some fun. Get your machine threaded and uh, let me know what you think. See y'all later. Bye.